My purpose in creating this video is I want to give just a conversational introduction to a very important concept that gets talked about very little, and that is the idea of a bioregional learning center. So let me begin by saying that this concept is really well articulated in an essay that came out in 1983 by the lead author of the Limits to Growth Study, Dana Meadows, when she conclu concluded a 10-year study of how humans can live within planetary boundaries and live within the limits to growth, as they had called it in the early 1970s. And this is something that grew out of dialogues that occurred at many universities around the world with many different thinkers and scholars and um, policy leaders and economists and computer modelers all coming together over the span of 10 years. And out of their 10 years of inquiry, they came to the realization that there's only one way to get to planetary sustainability. And that is to create local living economies organized at the bioregional scale, and that each local place develops its own capacities for addressing systemic challenges that are appropriate to that place, which means each place needs to create its own bioregional learning center. So where I live in Barichara, Colombia, we are establishing our own bioregional learning center, which we call Barichara Ecoversity. So let me tell you a little bit about what is a bioregional learning center. If you imagine something that's like a, a watershed or a, a mountain range or a coastal estuary, a larger landscape structure that is able to hold all of the complexity of local human cultures, a local economic system, and all of the extended ecology for the biodiversity and the ecological relationships of a specific place. That this place, so maybe it's like um, one of the branches of the Colorado River, or it could be part of the drainage of the Mississippi River in the United States, or maybe it's one of the 200 rivers that contributes to the larger Amazon basin. That within these complex landscapes, there is a need for humans to organize all of their learnings and knowledge about the history and the evolution of that place. And the purpose of a bioregional learning center is to combine this knowledge. So a bioregional learning center will include maps and scientific studies of flora and fauna and ecological relationships, the geology and the ecological history of the place. It would also include the cultural history. So were there indigenous people living in that place? How did they organize their social and economic lives? What was the nature of their spirituality and their worldview? How did they relate to the rivers and the rocks and the water and the, um, you know, the, the forests or the other kinds of ecosystems of that place? And so the Bioregional Learning Center would hold all of this kind of knowledge. It would also be a place for integrating and synthesizing existing learning uh, processes within the landscape. So maybe there are ecological restoration projects and they are learning processes. Maybe there's research that's being done at local universities. Perhaps there's an understanding of economic development, the major industrial sectors of the place, and how it relates to the resource flows of materials through the landscape. All of these would become part of what a bioregional learning center would coordinate, synthesize, and integrate. But also there is work to convene and gather and hold dialogue among diverse stakeholders and community leaders within the landscape. Bioregional learning centers could help to do this work. It could be a place of convening around historical traumas and conflict and violence, degradation of landscapes, and the healing processes that are needed. It can be a place for collective dreaming and envisioning and aspiring into a collective future so that maybe a landscape plan or partnership can arise around a shared agenda for the regeneration of the territory. All of this could be coordinated through a bioregional learning center. All of these aspects of a bioregional learning center take place within the bioregion itself. And of course, there's more than what I'm saying here, but you could already imagine how we could re-envision 
some of our local government agencies, research centers, universities, alternative schools, permaculture research centers, landscape restoration activities, and healing processes of diverse kinds, all being reconfigured and reintegrated into a bioregional learning center, which means all of that knowledge becomes collectively inward facing. The bioregion learns to learn, they learn how to learn about themselves, their own landscape, how it came to be the way that it is, and how they want it to become through coordinated efforts in the future. So this is one key domain of many features for a bioregional learning center. But then there's the outward facing component, which is that the bioregion can coordinate itself and become coherent by creating an, a local learning ecosystem, which is that there are different learning activities like graduate level research, elementary school, uh, eco-literacy, um, learning processes in cultural history, reclamation and restorative justice processes for things like previous genocides or displacement of indigenous peoples, and so on. Many different things. And all of this can become coherent to the outside world by having a learning center, a place that holds the coherence and the integrity and the human relationships of all of these diverse activities within the bioregion. So that if there's someone that's coming from outside of the bioregion and they want to learn about the entire landscape as a whole, they have a single entry point. So perhaps, like we're doing now with bioregional activators, perhaps there is a neighboring or a different bioregion. So, for example, we're working with the people of the Gunnison River Basin in Colorado, which is on the western slopes of the Rocky Mountains in some of the headwaters of the Colorado River. And we're working with the people in the town of Paonia. The people in Paonia may want to learn about what we're doing in Barichara. And there's so much happening in Barichara. We're already working with about 30 different projects within our own territory. And the complexity and the diversity is only going to grow as we get better at managing as our, ourselves as an integrated landscape. So how would someone from Paonia, who wants to regenerate their own landscape, come to Barichara and enter into the territory and begin participating in this holistic learning process. Well, the Barichara Ecoversity, as a bioregional learning center, can hold this coherence as an entry point. It can say, if everyone from the outside who wants to learn about bioregional regeneration comes to the Barichara Ecoversity, they will then be, be able to arrive and start to learn about the the regeneration efforts of our entire territory, and then discover through their learning how to go deeper and who they should talk to and which projects they should connect with because there's a coherent entry point. And so if Paonia builds their own bioregional learning center, then these become portals to connect with each other and we can sustain coherent long-term relationships for learning exchanges between the two bioregions. So the bioregional learning centers have this huge coherent deep work to organize themselves, but also the coherence that that creates enables them to connect in powerful and sustained ways for transformational learning with other bioregions. So it's in this way that bioregional learning centers are fundamental to the regeneration of the earth. We cannot get to the landscape scale, the scale of a watershed or a coastal estuary or any other large scale feature without the local people learning to see how they all learn together. So they're each learning in different ways through projects and activities and they need this coherence for their own work. They have to coordinate their own landscapes. And so a bioregional learning center naturally emerges from that process. But then as they seek to learn and collaborate with other bioregions, the other bioregions need to create their own bioregional learning centers for exactly the same reason, to support their own landscape regeneration and to have coherent and manageable collaboration from one bioregion to another. So in this 10-minute you know, video that I'm now completing, I just wanted to give you a general introduction to what is a bioregional learning center and how does it work and why are they so essential. And so I'll leave it here for now to say I hope this stimulates your thinking to imagine what are the existing educational research and regenerative practices 
in your bioregion that could begin to amalgamate and aggregate and integrate into your own bioregional learning center and or your learning ecosystem that is contained coherently by your landscape? And how can you find other landscapes that may be farther along than you are to help you to do this more effectively and more quickly? Or how can you take what you're learning and moving further along to help others advance in other bioregions? So I hope that this is helpful for you. And I look forward to collaborating as we create a planetary network of bioregional regeneration, that this focus on bioregional learning centers is one of many areas we will need to collaborate in in the days and years ahead. Thank you.